اهلا فيكم متابعينا حلقه جديده من برنامج شرايها عليا اليوم عندي حوار مره ثانيه عن علاج السرطان بالطب البديل مع دكتور توماس لودي الحوار بيكون باللغه العربيه ولكن في ترجمه في الاعدادات في الفيديو نفسه اضغطوا على الترجمه عشان تشوفون ترجمة الحوار بالعربي إن شاء الله. Thank you very much, Dr. Ladi, for uh, coming today again uh, for having these discussions. We're picking up questions from people from previous episodes, and one of the common questions that I'm getting that I'd like for us to uh, unpack a little bit today is the question of does biopsy uh, spread cancer, and does maybe even a lumpectomy or removing an organ or a cutting of any sort does that spread the cancer cells? Well, that's really such an important question because, um, yes, it does. We know that, um, uh, in fact, when, when, when a doctor is doing a biopsy, they have the kind of technique where they go in and they, they, it sucks up a piece of the tumor. But as they're pulling out, they have to be pushing a little bit. If they're still sucking, they'll pull tumor into the normal tissue. You know, so. It, it's called tracking. You'll track it into it. Uh, anyway, it can't be avoided. It always happens, number one. You track it. Number two, when you stick a needle in, what you cause is trauma. You cause an injury, and now the body is going to respond with in inflammation. Well, we know that the fundamental underlying pathology in all diseases, including cancer, is chronic inflammation. So you've contributed to the whole inflammatory process, Okay, which means you're turning on the, the, the different cytokines in the body that support the cancer growth because it's chronic inflammation. So, <clears throat> um, so that's what you've done. Now, the reason they're doing it is um, because they would have us believe that without knowing the exact cell type, they can't treat it. That's the idea. Well, it turns not, out they should treat it because they might not even know if it's cancer, right? Right, or they might not even know it's cancer. Yeah. Now, there's, not, there's another non-invasive way of doing this, of course, and that's a PET scan. Now, PET scans, and there's also another, either, probably the best in the world, is a, a test that comes out of Japan uh, by one doctor in particular. It's a TM, TMCA test. It's a simple blood test. It will tell you if you have nanograms, micrograms, milligrams, or a gram or more of cancer. Uh, and we use, we use his testing for... for in a variety of different situations. But um, anyway, so if you do a PET scan, it will tell you if it's cancer or not. Now, there are there is an area, there is a, there is a part where it's equivocal, right? And in those situations, you can pretty much work with it. Um, so there's a, I have a, I, an x-ray showed that I had a, a mass on my pancreas. Do I need to stick a needle in my pancreas? What else is going to be there? Well, I can do a PET scan now. It'll show me if it lights up, then it's cancer. Okay, so now if I stick a needle in, or let's say I go in and I do surgery, the surgery is even worse than the biopsy. Because the surgery, when you remove, you, and you want to get clean margins, that clean margins means you want to get the area, you don't want to leave any tumor in, so you're going to get an area next to the tumor that is cancer free, healthy. So you're going to make a clean cut like that. Well, when you do that, you wind up spreading the cancer. Number two, you cause inflammation and a really severe inflammatory reaction. I mean, you open your body and all that. Um, now, number three, in order to get surgery, you have to have general anesthesia. General anesthesia involves giving you chemicals that are so powerful that you don't feel anything, so powerful that you can't move, so powerful that you're unconscious. So they bring you this close to death with chemicals, with toxins. So now when you come out of it and into the recovery room, you're recovering from being inundated with toxins. Who has the job of cleaning this up? Your liver. How long does it take your liver to clean up that? Six to 12 weeks, depending on the condition of your liver. Which means that for six to 12 weeks, your liver, your liver is otherwise engaged. It's busy. So you better not have any kind of need for it, but you will. And the liver is a big part of our immune system. The other thing, is that now our immune system and our entire healing response has now gone towards this wound and is not towards the cancer, if, if that was cancer. So we've diverted all of the body's attention to healing a wound. 
Anyway, so many problems with it that unless the only time we recommend surgery is under certain four circumstances. Number one, um, it's blocking a vital function. You can't breathe, you can't eat, you can't have a bowel movement. Number two, excruciating pain. Number three, um, it's just simply too big. It'll never be recycled. And that is just basically, basically those, those three. Right? The other one is, uh, and that really depends, in the skull or in the spine, because the skull is an enclosed place. Any growth can result in death. So in those places, those are the times we would say maybe you should get radiation first before you come, uh, or maybe you should get that surgery first and then come, because we're, we're, we're in an enclosed place. And the same thing as if it's in the spine. But other than that, if it's soft tissue, anywhere else we don't. So why would biopsy then still be the first thing that gets offered? I mean, I know we talked about the perspective of the medical world on cancer in another episode, but I don't think anybody ever hears the side effects of a biopsy or of a lumpectomy before they have the procedure. Right, and, and you know, I mean, um, just to, just to illustrate how it spreads, I had a, a ballerina. She was in the New York New York Ballet. She was a very well known ballerina. She had a lump. She had a biopsy, and within two weeks, she had satellite cancers all around it. Okay, and she, it was terrible. But anyway, she wound up coming out to Arizona to be treated. She couldn't do her dancing anymore. Um, but anyway. You know, that's what happens. And, and the other thing is it causes pain, inflammation, it spreads the cancer. It's just, it's all around. And the thing is, if you've got to, now when you feel cancer in the breast, there's no doubt. It's not, and cancer's hard. It's not regular. It's not a, like a perfectly round thing. It's irregular and it's, you know, cancer's hard or, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear what it is. But the reason they, they want to do it is they want to find out, is it estrogen receptor positive, progesterone receptor positive, and is it HER2 positive? These are, uh, these are tests that they do on the specimen. The reason they do these tests is because they have drugs for each one of the conditions, only two of actually. For estrogen receptor positive, they will give tamoxifen or some other variant that blocks estrogen receptors. The, for, if it's HER2 positive, they have Herceptin, which is another one, and there's, I think there's another drug out now that also does the same sort of thing. Um, for progesterone receptor positive, they have no drugs. So they, they tell you, don't worry about it. it it's very interesting. So, so they're doing it mainly to sell drugs. I mean, and I, that sounds very cynical of me, but I don't know how else to say it because I know now, I mean, the way I treat estrogen receptor positive breast cancer is with estriol, which is the third estrogen that women make. Uh, it's the estrogen that dominates during pregnancy. Uh, it, it, it binds to the beta receptor, estrogen receptor, not the alpha receptor. So therefore, it shrinks tumors, doesn't stimulate their growth. It also blocks now the alpha receptor. So even if there's estradiol or estrone around, it can't get to it. So it's blocking. So it's doing the same thing. So does soy. The big controversy with soy. Soy is a phytoestrogen. Yeah, but it, but it goes to the beta receptor. So it's good for you which is why Japanese live 10 years longer. They eat soy all day long. Yeah, assuming it's non-GMO, non non, because most non -GMO and, modified. Exactly, and, and, and if you notice that all the indigenous cultures who've eaten soy have uh, fermented it. So miso, tempeh, you know, the natto, they have fermented products because otherwise you can get GI upset. Not that it's not effective. Yeah, so, so would you say that if the person wanted to go alternative, then there's no need to biopsy because when, once you know you have a, a, a lump of some sort, then you're going to treat it the same anyway. You're going to clean up the diet, clean up the system. But then if you want to go medical, mainstream medical at least, then they'll tell you we have to know what type it is in order to know which medicine to give you. Right, and then right. you'll be now, cornered like that, you know? Exactly. Um, because then, as I said, they, they say that this type of cancer requires this chemo and et cetera, and they can give you all their statistics and prognosis, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but when you understand cancer from a different perspective, and that is that the cancer is a systemic condition, it's not a local condition. I may have a 
tumor here, and if you remove it, I'll, it'll, I'll grow another one. Because if you had a poison apple tree and you picked all the apples, you haven't solved the problem because next spring you're going to have a new crop of apples. So it's not the apples. Those are just manifestations of it. What we, that's what we have to understand. And that's why surgery doesn't work. In 99%, somebody was telling me yesterday, yeah, well, then why does chemo work with some people? It works in very rare, very rare instances. Very rare. I mean, I mean, you gotta, you got to remember, I talked to, in the last 15 years, I can't tell you how many people with cancer I've talked to, right? And uh, they, most of them are there for the recurrences. You know, more, you know it's, I don't get as many first-timers. But I get they're all recurrences uh, because why? Because the, re, the first timers are saying they're going to go to the conventional. Yeah. The recurrence is saying, look, this hasn't worked. I need I need another alternative. But um, I know chemo, radiation, and surgery don't work. If surgery worked, cancer would be easy. There wouldn't be no cancer industry. It doesn't work. That's why they, that's why it do, you know we know it doesn't work. So cutting it out doesn't work because. As we said before, it's not hard getting rid of cancer. The hard part is keeping it done because it's in, it's a systemic thing. So we've got to treat it systemically. That's why I don't want to cut it out and all that sort of thing, unless it's simply too big, too painful, or blocking a function. Otherwise, let's, because it will now be a way in which we can observe our progress. You know, instead yes. of having to do invasive testing, I can see, oh, it's getting. You know, it's but I mean, the key of what you're saying here is that. If you decide not to do any of these things, do the other stuff because a lot of people will, you know, might hear that and say, "Oh, biopsy spreads it, or lumpectomy spreads it." Therefore, I will decide not to do anything. And then a few months later, there's a bigger lump and bigger spread because you haven't done the opposite either. You know, you once you know there is something, then you have to do the other one. You have to go at it with something, especially if you're not going to biopsy it and not going to remove it then you still have to do the work of getting it out of your system. And I think this is what's, what's massively misunderstood, that I heard something about how biopsy is dangerous, therefore I'm refusing biopsy, and it ends there, and it can't end there. You have to then do something radical to undo the cancer, because cancer is radical in itself, and it needs something just as crazy to kill it. That's exactly, 100% agree. It's crazy, it's radical, and it's the most, uh, what's the word, um, inventive, yes. uh, yeah, creative. Very smart, yeah. If you yeah. put something here, it'll go around it. You know, you do one thing, two things to cancer, it'll find a, it's like water going down the, down the hill. It's gonna go, you got a rock, it'll find a way around. That's the way cancer is, and we have to realize that. So you, and in fact, you can't just do one thing. So you can't come and say, well, look at it, I changed my diet. Okay, well, the time you go to bed, how are your relationships, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. You know, we've got, everything contributes to it. So it's, a, it's either you do that big change or go to the conventional, you know, at least yeah. do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which, yeah. which might, yeah. you might end up going back to alternative eventually anyway, even after going conventional, uh, unfortunately. But uh, yes, I think this gives a good perspective. I think a biopsy is, a, a bit, people are going into it a bit too readily, not knowing the side effects. So I think this sheds a bit of light on that. So yeah. um, in future episodes, I hope to answer more questions. I have so many questions for you, but there's no way we can answer everything at once. So we'll have uh, hopefully more conversations like this. And I'm really, really appreciative of your time and the precious information that you're giving across. Thank you very much. شكرا لمتابعتكم وان شاء الله لنا حلقات كثيره في المستقبل مع نفس الطبيب او اطباء اخرين ايضا لا تنسوا تحطوا لنا تعليقاتكم في الحلقه نفسها عشان اخذ افكار الحلقات المقبله من اسئلتكم نقدر نجاوبها ان شاء الله شكرا لمتابعتكم